Ladies and gentlemen, Matt McAndrew in the building! Yeah, hell yeah! Oh. Hell yeah, we appreciate you doing this, sir. Thanks for joining us today. I'm BG, that's my co-host today, Lloyd, a.k.a. Burn Like Stars. But uh, Matt, for people that may not know who you are, could you please uh, properly introduce yourself, let us know whereabouts in the world you are at the moment, and plug or promote anything you'd like. My name is Matt McAndrew. I'm in Los Angeles, California, where I live and work. Um, I'm in a band called Rain City Drive, and I do solo stuff still, and some writing, and you know all the all the good all the good things. All the good things, hell yeah! Are you originally from Los Angeles, or did you move there? I'm from New Jersey. Okay, cool. New Jersey, hell yeah! Yup. I uh yep. I actually caught the uh, the Glass House show on the Memphis tour recently, which was fantastic. Oh. You guys killed it. Thanks, man. Thanks, um, bro. Hell yeah. Is there, is there a particular stop on that tour that stood out more than the others uh, during that run? Yeah, I would say the Sacramento show probably just because it was a, um, it was a last minute pop-up show. So I think it was like five, $5 tickets and nice. um, sold out in like a day. And I think the energy around the show was just really cool because of that. It felt like um, the, the fans were like especially into it. So it was cool. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Can you can you go through the process of how the the label that I don't want to say the label but they wouldn't they wouldn't release your music obviously that gets old really really quick and then all of a sudden RCD comes along and says we want you into the group how was that process how did that go about um sure so are you like saying back to like the voice days for me cuz I know you after the voice I want to get to the voice too but after that didn't didn't re uh, a label that started with an R it escapes me. I want to say Reprise or somebody. Republic Records. Republic. But for, what was the reason for them not putting out your music? Um, I don't know. I think uh, Republic is a. I mean, it's like one of the biggest labels out there, and their their style is more kind of. They'll just sign a bunch of stuff and just see what see what sticks. You know what I mean? And so, I had done well enough on the show, where um they they wanted to sign me and they kind of had first dibs to sign me so they did that we put out a single and then they were just kind of taking their time figuring out what to do with me um and at that point um i was a i was um able to leave basically contractually so i did did they release your music back to you or are they permanently like shelving it no yeah no there's no there's no weird shelving or anything like that i just did one single with them and then moved moved on and it was all in all it was only like a 10 month thing it wasn't it wasn't bad at all it was uh yeah i mean i feel like going into those scenarios like it could be kind of scary and you hear these horror stories like crazy contracts that people sign or whatever but um for me the voice was super great um Re republic was a cool like learning experience and like like i said they're a, a really good label and it wasn't a great um experience for me personally but i think that's just because um i just i just don't think they're super earnest in their like role with the show like they, they're like yeah sure like we're like involved but they're just they're just not very involved you know what i mean so people win and stuff and i don't think they they bother learning the names of the winners or anything like that is kind of my understanding um but which is maybe why you know like different shows like idol or whatever had a little more success because it, it probably the, the whole team is a little more involved but in, in terms of just nbc's the voice had an awesome experience it was great in terms of like working with adam i had a great experience and like for what it was the republic stuff was was fine and fun and 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 wasn't like a major setback by any means so gotcha uh lloyd do you have a question or two while i queue up uh an rcd song real quick I mean, something that always stood out to me, like I listened to Slaves when Johnny Craig was in it because I'm a huge fan of Johnny Craig. How sure. did you feel stepping in to like, that's like a tough act to follow. Like, did you feel a lot of pressure having to like follow Johnny Craig's line? Yeah, I mean, you have a phenomenal voice, but Johnny Craig's like, you know, definitely an idol to a lot of us. How did you feel about that? Yeah, so I'd, I'd never heard of Johnny Craig or Slaves when I got the call to no do shit. it and like replace him in a couple days. So I didn't have time to think about it, and I just tried to have a sense of humor about it because it was – I was just like, oh, yeah, you want to go to, go to Europe? I'm like, yeah. And <laughs> sure. you know what I mean? So 
I feel like it, it, it would have been a lot harder had I been a fan or even been familiar with what I was stepping into. Fair enough. Um, and then I think, you know, I think it got to a point where um, certainly by the time, you know, we had we had toured a lot of Beautiful Death and we were, you know, stepping in the studio to do to, to, do to better to better days. I was really familiar, at least with his work on Beautiful Death and um, was a fan of what he had done and um, kind of understood the assignment, I guess, at that point in terms of like filling in. And so um, it, it, it was really good for me. Um, you know, uh, to have to fill those shoes, so to speak, and um, definitely, definitely made me grow and improve as a vocalist. Oh yeah, you the changed the whole sound of that band. Out. Like you, yeah, you did it your sounds, own thing. It sounds phenomenal. The new stuff's oh, phenomenal. Thanks, but yeah, but so, but so, anyways, ha- hats off to Johnny for like um, pushing me more as a vocalist, just mm-hmm. by merit of me having to step into that role, and and um, you know, which was which was really really positive for me. So it was, it was cool, man. Was there was there any other bands that that hit you up that maybe you would factored in before deciding on on Rain City Drive? No, I mean I wasn't. Um, I was just doing my solo thing. I was supposed to do this like Voice Vegas residency thing that fell through because um, somebody bought the casino that they were working with or some. That was a whole thing. That was like uh, we were on TV promoting it and everything, and then it just they spent like you know millions of dollars building this new complex and then it was just like oh that's not that's not happening oh, that's so it was weird. right around that time that i got the call to uh to just fill in for this for this tour um and i mean you know to be honest i i grew up um playing in bands and stuff like singing playing in bands um and then when i decided to focus more on solo stuff i just never thought that i would go back to doing that especially after you know doing the voice and um i think i put like you know, eight years into my solo stuff before meeting the guy. So um, I just I just never saw myself in another band. I mean, I that, that was my goal when I started, but it, I could just I could just never really get it to work. And I had a lot more luck as a solo act. So, um, yeah, actually, well, that's that's not that's not completely true of the, the way that I met um, the guys is, is through my buddy, Kevin, Kevin Thrasher. And we had started a project together. Oh, yeah, I know. I know Thrasher. Yeah, but I just feel like that, like in you know, a duo is so is so much easier than like a, you know, I'm like ah, oh, you just gotta get along with one other guy and you make stuff and you know what I mean. So, but in terms of like a a band in the traditional sense of like four four or five guys and um, everybody's got a you know equal say and 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 throwing out ideas and whatever, um, I kind of thought that those days were behind me. So yeah, I wouldn't have. And which is cool because you you usually you, you do actively seek things out and you and you put it out there and you try for it whatever and this just kind of came out of left field I wasn't expecting it at all you know so is that a diploma behind you yeah dude where what's what school did, <laughs> what school did you attend uh school of fucking hard knocks um university arts in Philadelphia. Oh, so, cool. Yeah, I grew up in grew up in Jersey. Went there, studied some music. I was all self taught before that, so that was that was really great. That gave me a good like foundation vocally. Then I learned a lot more when I did the voice as well. And then, um, yeah. I mean, I mean, the style of music you're in is definitely different from a lot of other people on the voice. Did you ever expect that you would be like I don't know how to word it, but you sold the most singles out of any participant in the voice, like of people. I read somewhere on that. Pretty impressive. Like, did you expect that? What, what, what do you say, bro? I, I don't know how to word it. If it was like the you sold the most singles, but you sold the most like uh, tracks out of any like person that was on the voice, like even like the winners and stuff. Like you like smashed everybody. Did you expect that much? Like like like. Did, uh, did you see the fans going that crazy? Did yeah. You, did like, you anticipate did you that? that? In terms of when I was on the show. Yeah. No, man. I mean, my my like wildest dreams were just to get on a couple episodes. Facts. Um, I I just. I just um, finished a like a solo EP that I was really proud of before I went on the show. So it's like it'd be great to just shine a spotlight on that. Yeah. With my whole was my whole mentality. And I, I actually used to joke about what would happen if I made it to the f- finale and that like people would just stop listening, like stop oh, you watching. Kicked and so much ass after that. That's crazy. <laughs> well, yeah, it was. It, I, I, you know, because I had I never watched the show and I don't. I watched the first season of Idol when I was a kid. And so I was just kind of comparing it to that. And I was like, oh, I'm not really like a Kelly Clarkson type of singer. And eventually everybody will figure out I'm not what they're looking for. And then by the time the lives came around, I was like, oh, this is actually going really well. And I seem to be what they're looking for. So sick. And it just kind of 
kept going well. So yeah, awesome. dude. Now that we got the hard questions out of the way, we'll do some fun ones here in a second, but let's jam waiting on you, which is I think my personal favorite. <laughs> Yo, who who produced the the newest album? What producer so did you get? We we um we split um we split it between Eric Ron and Matt Squire. So that was a track we do with Matt Squire. Yeah. Okay, cool. As someone that yeah. is has a lot of tattoos myself, what is your most painful tattoo you've ever gotten? Hmm. Probably technically this stuff. Oh like yeah. I, I, I like had my hands done basically, but I went in and did all the finger stuff like in one go. And um, it's like the only tattoo I, I've ever got that, that just like didn't stop hurting after it was done because it was so swollen. Um, this dude, Thomas Hooper, is still, still probably my f favorite tattoo artist. Um, he, he just does such a good job in those tricky areas that tend to fade um so i you know and i'm just a huge fan of his work so that was awesome it was a real honor to get him to do um the tats that he's done on me but yeah it was like i didn't have i'm not over exaggerating like i didn't have knuckles for a month they were like, just that fat just, and swollen yeah they just looked like little boxing gloves dang <laughs> and um yeah so that was that was pretty rough um yeah oh yeah um what's what's a like a, a hobby of yours when you're not focused on music so I did. I did get back into playing video games over the pandemic. Yeah, was, buddy. Um, I kind of stopped when I was in high school, just to focus more on music and 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 what and whatnot. But um, yeah, there was that. There was that nice time in the pandemic where I think all of us were just like, I'm gonna Game play video games and save the world. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, dude, that was really cool. I started. I would start, you know, messing around on Twitch a little bit, um, to try to justify it. <laughs> To myself, like, yeah, I'm, I'm working. Um, but that was cool. Uh, Breath of the Wild like saved me for sure. Nice. I it's, I played that thing for like 300 hours. It was awesome. Uh, recently beat Elden Ring. That was also a lot of fun. Nice, congrats. Yeah, bro. That's You're talking to a real Elden Elden Lord. I don't know if we yeah, have that. Buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Who's but, the hardest boss you think? Ooh. Um. Yeah, what, mm. what's, which one did you die like 300 was. times and then finally you Remember got him and you were just like in. take that mother finally yes yeah, so, so like we just me and a couple buddies just beat uh melania melania however you say it and um that was actually pretty easy because i think we're just like too high of a level at this point i just hit her go. with the old god skin peeler and she didn't have a chance <laughs> um like I, th I think back to like the old Godfrey days of like just not feeling pretty ill-equipped and like I yeah. insisted on beating that guy myself and that was a lot of fun. But I mean that was like that took me days. I feel like so, you know, yeah. Did you guys? Did you guys play 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 through that one as well? Oh, yeah, I did. I don't think I, he, did. he did. I have not. But I've I've played all the Fallout, Skyrim's, you know, a lot of other cool. RPGs nice. awesome. and stuff. Awesome, bro. I do got to say, it is super surreal that you're doing this because you're definitely on my, uh, when I go to the studio, I have a couple of your songs that I'll warm up to and practice and get ready to. And your voice has helped me definitely improve within my last couple tracks. So oh, I got to say nice, thank man. you for doing what you do. What is your most emotional song on Rain City Drive? What's something that gets you every time you sing it? Mm, you know, it's it's hard to say because we, we haven't got to perform um, all of the new record yet. Like we just... We just uh, were out with Memphis, which was awesome. Did but you we... crack in studio? How about that? Was there a song you were recording in studio that it just got to you? You cracked a little bit, got a little teary die? Hmm. I get made fun of for that when it happens. You start getting <laughs> choked up a little bit. Oh, dude, no, I'm like notorious for that. <laughs> if something is, even if it, some, sometimes it's less about whether the song's sad and it's more about just if it's like really beautiful. Yeah. I tried to do this song one time uh, for my solo stuff that we had this great like session piano player in nashville and we're like oh yeah let's just cut it you and him live and i and i actually just couldn't do it like i just left and like went for a walk because i was just that's like that's tough um it was the same same shit happened to me uh the voice finale somewhere over the rainbow i know a lot of people are like oh that wasn't that it was like i was trying not to fucking sob the whole time yeah, i'm basically a, singing about my all my dreams coming true and whatever and i was just like too much um let's let, let's let's see um he's gotta I look was, at his catalog <laughs> yeah let me see here real quick um I mean, pro probably if I was right, um, I know. Yeah, yeah. That that one that one definitely going through the verses. 
um, it like starts out as me kind of like giggling, and then I'm just like, oh, I'm just trying, I'm just trying not to cry at this point. I'm just kind of like laughing at myself. I feel that. Um, but yeah, dude, no, I mean, I think I think that's, you know, we all have those moments in our lives where we're like, am I dead inside? And then it's nice to have those moments where you're like, ah, oh, I do, I do feel some things. Like, Big okay, facts. yeah. Yeah, if dude. You, if you guys could get a feature, let's say just hypothetically there was like a remix album for for this, yeah. but not remixes like you know typical remix, just features on tracks. Who would be a, a guest or two that you would want to to work with? Alive Dead, Haley Williams. Ooh, okay. Probably just my favorite singer in general. Um, who else? I, I big. Big fan of old Ollie, Ollie Sykes. It'd be cool to hear him do something like kind of heavier on some of the like little breakdowny parts that we have. Nice. Or I just sing like a pop melody. It'd be cool to hear him do do some fun over it. But yeah, I want Tyler Carter so bad. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's a goal of mine one day if he ever does it. Definitely, definitely talented singer for, for sure. Heck yeah. Uh, we've got time. How much for... did how much did Adam Levine like impact you like on the show? Because they show a lot of that, but it's like you get to work with him and see things that people don't. Did he really open your eyes to some things that you didn't expect or didn't know vocally? Or was, was it just kind of coaching, just kind of help pushing a little bit? I would say there was a lot about Adam that um, I found like inspiring. You know, just even just look looking at his whole life and setup and being like. That, that was pretty good <laughs> you know like it's a guy who's somebody who's done like extremely well for himself and is and is and has managed to you know have like really um you know reach like the the top of like pop success but also be in a in a really cool cool band and write some great great songs and like rock out live and um yeah i don't know just just super cool dude i i, I also do like um i feel like i i have a, a little bit of a past like if i ever um I put out a solo song called "If I Was the Devil," and I feel like I copped a little bit of his just vocal style on that. Nothing which, wrong with which that. I, well, which I think is fun because I can literally be like, "He was my coach." Yeah. So, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, it's like, I feel like it's hard to it's hard to talk shit on it. Did but you get no, nervous I mean, he, around him at all? Do you feel like you acted a little dumb around him, or it was just like he was just an, he just made you feel so normal around him? Probably in like the the very first interaction or so but no he's he's a really chill guy like um a good coach for you yeah absolutely yeah yeah we we just we i think we were just really on the same page and it was, it was just super was easy. he who you wanted if you had to yeah pick? yeah i look like, going into it i i kind of was leaning towards him for sure um between him and pharrell honestly um but I, I was i was leaning towards adam and then once you know a lot of people don't know they they'll they'll, they'll edit down the show a lot before oh, yeah. it gets to the lives so like I was on stage, you know, uh, with them pitching themselves for like a half hour, you know. What I mean? like, the <laughs> really? Song is like, yeah, it's like, a, you know, thirty seconds or whatever it is, and then it's there's a, a lot, and they just edit it down to the the kind of the, the Damn, best. Damn, did they start fighting over you? Oh, I did not know it's that. Like, it's like a lot of different banter and jokes and funny. <laughs> I, think was, I think there was a girl on our our season, Beth, who who was up there for like fifty minutes or something. Damn. And this is them so, just trying to sell be on yeah, my team. Yeah. What? Yeah. There, there's got to be some clause in their contract that if they win, they pick the winner, they get like a bonus, bonus check oh, or something. No, I, th I think they're all <laughs> just competitive and and yeah. and have a good like re like rapport with each other, so like the jokes get flowing. But um, but no, yeah, I mean, basically, once I kind of like Pharrell was so cool, and he he actually helped me a lot too. I mean, he 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 would even like give me little pieces of advice here here there. Or he was the one who shouted out my original music when i was on the show he's like is there nice. a place that people and like crashed my my website it was it was awesome you nice know I mean? like, oh that's great so that's cool. um, i love adam i probably would have picked pharrell though pharrell's way too groovy so yeah groovy. i just like think on a personal level it was it was it was like the ideal fit for me and adam i mean he like took me out to like i like opened for a couple maroon maroon five shows oh, like nice tour was over and like hooked me up with his management and got got, got me on some dope tours and yeah no that was that was definitely like I think ultimately you just want to be with the person who wants you the most, like in, in anything in life, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, and I think not only was he the right stylistic fit, but he was just super passionate about it and, and the song choices and everything were, were really cool. So Awesome. Matt, we have time for maybe one or two more and then we'll let you go, sir. Uh, cool. I, I want to know. Have to? We can't keep him. Unfor <laughs> unfortunately, no, he's just very busy, man, unfortunately. But, um, 
Matt, what is your what is your dream vacation? Like where if if hypothetically money didn't matter, where would sure. you go and just vacation for a month? Hmm. Um, I'm super stoked to get back to Europe and I would like to take my mom to Europe. She's like never been outside of the country. I feel like a little like mom and sister, like Paris, London, yeah. kind of that kind of vibe would be really cool. Maybe Italy. Um, for me personally, I've still I've still never been to Japan. I'd like to check out Japan a lot. Um, that would that would be high up on my list for sure. Do you have any weird or unusual vocal warm up tricks? The probably the weirdest one that I. And it's like instead of doing a normal, um, like arpeggiated like. It's like a you basically sound like a cartoon like Basset Hound. It's like and like make your voice crack like that on purpose. Okay. But what it what it does is it winds up ro like rolling the sound around in your mask, and you kind of get used to like dancing around your break instead of trying to avoid it. So I I I, I teach some like Zoom vocal lessons on the side as well, and that's something I'm always trying to instill in people is like. Um, I think the, the first time your voice cracks, you're like, never again. And so you just try to belt past that or kind of shout past it so it doesn't happen when you're when you're getting into your mixed voice. Feel but it. yeah, but what, what I would say is like, no, nobody really has a volume problem unless you're shy. Everybody has a control problem. So you need to learn how to navigate, navigate that um, range in your mix um, and just learn how to be flexible where like you can play around there and it just the temptation to crack you just kind of can just like nope that's not gonna happen you can just kind of swarm around it and be like you must become like water you know on some real zen shit but yeah how does somebody find you for vocal lessons i need uh, i'm terrible yeah, okay yeah i got it's um <laughs> it's calendly.com slash mick and you okay. like mick and university mick and you um you could probably find it on my Insta. i don't know, you can, anybody can send me a message or whatever i'll send you a link but yeah it's a fun thing that I do when um, I'm home so I don't lose my mind. Um, Fair. And you can learn some things. I have, I feel like I have a good mixture because like up until college, I was all self, self-taught. self And then college, I kind of learned a bunch of music theory and ear training and musicianship and that kind of stuff. And then just, you know, even being able to offer some kind of career direction and mentorship stuff like you know, go, going going through all the other stuff that I've been through at this point, so I can kind of cover a wide. I need that sweet. Right. Well, we have one final question for you. We ask every single guest on the show this final question: What is a a piece of musical advice somebody has given you that you're willing to share that was completely like a game changer for you, or mm. when you first started your career, a terrible mistake you made that you don't want any starting up band to make? Hmm. Damn, I don't know if I made any terrible mistakes. I mean, the, what, the, where where I started out was a very small town called uh, Long Beach Island in New Jersey. It's just a little barrier island. And um, I just kind of didn't know any better. I, I just didn't have any... I wanted to play like this concert in the gazebo they did in the summer. And like that was my big... So I would just say, definitely you, you need to go where like anything's happening for sure which I did when I could. I, that's why I went to Philly for school. But I, w I would say probably the, the best advice that anybody gave me was uh, Pharrell in passing. One time he just kind of mentioned that like, he's like, hey, how's everything going? He's like, yeah, just remember, it's going to be like a roller coaster. It's going to be like this. It's going to be mm -hmm. ups and downs. Just like ride it. And I mean, even if you look at his career, like, you know, everybody has those moments where as a producer, as a singer or whatever, like you're totally on top. And then it's like you kind of like take a little step back and then you come back. And, and um, I just, yeah, like nothing lasts forever in life, you know? And so, especially in music. Yeah, like it, it's this constant game of, I mean, even, even somebody like Paul McCartney, like he's like a, you know, couldn't be a bigger living legend, but he's not as famous as, you know, like the height of the Beatles shit. And mm -hmm. he doesn't care, you know what I mean? But it's just, it's it's just funny so i just i guess i would just tell people to um that's probably the best advice that i've gotten personally is just is just ride it and just understand that you know one moment you're going to be down here and then one moment you're going to be up here and like just stay on the ride and it's all good um my personal piece of advice if i could offer it to people would just be to 
you know, try to remember why you do what you do and just be just be somebody who's really doing the damn thing, like really be legit. That was always my goal. I was always just like, you know what, even if I'm playing this little amp in Philly and I'm carrying my Vox AC, AC30 up the stairs by myself and I'm whatever and there's five five people there, like I want anybody in attendance to just be like, that guy's like legit, you know, and he's like really doing this no matter what level you're at with it. Max. I think if you can kind of stay true to yourself and like be cool and like really do it for the right reasons, like that'll, that'll get you through, you know? Um, because everybody's always, there's always going to, unless, unless you're Ed Sheeran, there's always going to be somebody <laughs> who's bigger than you. Right. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like in, in some kind of metric, always a bigger and so, fish. Yeah. So that's, that's not what it's about. It's about being somebody's favorite. It's about mm -hmm. being somebody's like, like somebody's like, um, you know, would you rather see rain city drive or, you know, X huge artist in, in the world. And like, rain and city I can drive. be. Yeah, if I can be somebody's favorite singer or in somebody's favorite band or have written somebody's favorite song. Like, that's all that for for me. That's always the goal because I grew up listening to to bands like, say, Modest Mouse, like pre Float On, and I was to me like Isaac Brock was like in the same category of John John Lennon or something. You know, like a all like I I so appreciated what he did, and I was able to grade it like myself and be like, yeah, this is this is on par with the best shit ever. You know what I mean? So, I think you got to just be in it for those reasons and yeah dude you're cool as fuck yeah dude this is, this yeah, is a lot of fun man we, we we appreciate you doing this matt uh awesome brother stay safe on the road when you're traveling uh please cool. keep feeding us that awesome music hopefully you guys can tour i mean i know you yes, will sir. but play a lot of the new stuff uh on the next yes, tour but um yes, safe travels brother we appreciate you so much matt of rain city drive Give me a hell yeah. thank you brother enjoy the rest of your day Thank you guys. Cheers.